Well, goodness knows what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm delighted to be joined by Lisa Nandy and Wes Streeting from Labour, John Whittingdale from the Tory party, and somebody who was recently in the Tory party, who is now a proud independent, Anna Subri. Um, I mean, I'm going to really ask all of you the same question. Where do you think we're going on Brexit? John, is there the faintest chance, in your view, that a deal will now be approved before the end of March? Yes, I think there is. I mean, the one thing which the House of Commons has said clearly is that there is potentially a majority for the Prime Minister's deal if she can resolve this issue around the backstop. The so-called Brady Amendment did pass with a reasonable majority, and I and a lot of my colleagues who were very unhappy about the deal and the Democratic Unionists have made clear that this is the issue which needs to be solved. Can, so... I, can I just pick up on that, as it were? Your colleague, Jacob rees I think, has written a piece in the Daily Mail, which will be out overnight, which says he would now be content, not with a full opening up of the so-called withdrawal agreement, but with a sort of legal text, uh, a codicil is what people refer to it as, which put a time limit on the backstop with a very specific date. I mean, first question is, would that satisfy you? Um, well, and secondly, do you, I mean, I don't think there's the faintest chance that the uh, European Union will put a specific date on, you know, on the end of the backstop. But if they don't, is there anything else you could accept? Well, what we want is something which gives us legal certainty that mm. there is a way out of the backstop. Mm. Um, now, I don't care if it's a codicil or an opening up of the withdrawal agreement, okay. as long as we are convinced that this does represent a legally binding uh, solution to the problem. Now, in terms of um, what my colleagues do, um, obviously, we have lots of unhappiness about various elements of a withdrawal agreement, uh, but I want to leave on well, the 29th you'll of vote, March. You'll vote for it if... Some kind of legal text that you think gives you comfort we could get out of the backstop, that's enough for you. I want to leave on the Is that a softening of, of your position? Well, I mean, we have had to make compromises. There are a lot of things about the withdrawal agreement and particularly the political declaration, which I don't like. But we will have that argument when we move into the next stage. Uh, and you're, sh you're shaking your head vigorously. Well, I assume you don't believe the EU is going to move enough. Uh, I don't on. think it is, but I think what you're seeing is this playing out of. I think it's a terrible game that the Prime Minister is playing, and it is a game. Uh, it's a dangerous game of brinkmanship. So what she's saying now to the likes of John is, if you don't vote for my deal, the danger is we will now move to a people's vote or I will simply delay Brexit. And equally, she's saying to other members of the Conservative Party who haven't backed her agreement, if you don't back my agreement, then it's going to be a no-deal Brexit.